Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another one of our Retailer to Publisher webinars. I am joined today by Kristen and Rebecca from Looney Labs, one of our best partners and longtime partners, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go through. Uh, if this is your first time as a retailer joining us on one of our webinars, first, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. We appreciate everybody taking the time. Um, as you go through and listen to a lot of stuff you're going to see today, if you have questions, definitely let us know. Leave a comment below in the YouTube channel. Of course, if you're feeling exceptionally awesome, you can give this video a thumbs up. You can like it. You can even subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know about more webinars coming your way about products like this. Today, we're going to talk about a company that I absolutely love and hold very near and dear to my heart because it's a company that is not just cool people and not just cool games, but they think really cool as well, which is awesome. And I don't want to steal all the thunder because they got a lot of really good stuff to say. But Rebecca, Kristen, thank you so much for taking the time and coming to join us to talk to our retailers. I will take my face that was made for radio and let it be quiet and let you all do a lot of the awesome <laughs> talking. So the floor is all yours, my friends. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if you turn on screen sharing real quick. So great. Um, so I'm the National Sales Manager at Looney Labs, and I want to thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Looney Labs and our games. So Looney Labs has been in the business of creating fun games and fun times for 26 years. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. In fact, I think the story about how Looney Labs got its um, start was kind of insightful to the personality of the company. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. So Kristen, and Andy met while both of them were working at NASA. And Andy was creating board games as a hobby and Kristen turned his hobby into a side business. And they could tell very early on um, the hit potential of a little card game called Flux. So they took the jump off the cliff and gave up very successful careers as aerospace engineers at NASA to start Looney Labs, where they um, create and sell Andy's games. So you'll see their love of space in many of Andy's games. And um, you'll also see Andy's kind of the heart of the games and Kristen is the heart of the business. And here we are 26 years later. So Kristen, can you give them a little bit more um, background about what is important to Looney Labs? Sure. Um, well, so I'm the CEO and visionary of Looney Labs, and I basically, you know, I created a company that manufactures fun. Um, so, but we do have three core values um, that kind of drive how we do everything. Um, we have them listed here. So social equality, um, it's a woman-owned business. Um, there's nine of us actively doing the work here, seven of which are women. Um, we also just got certified as an LGBT-owned um, and operated company. Um, and we work really hard to include like different skin colors, different sizes, different ages, um, a lot of that inclusivity in all of, our, all of the art for our games. Um, so as far as environmental responsibility, um, we give a 5% donation um, to environmental charities for our game Nature Flux. Um, everything is small packaging and recycled materials whenever possible. Um, and um, I don't know, we're just truly hippies, you know, peace and love and all that. Um, tie dye is our corporate colors, but it's also, you know, it, it's, it's on the inside um, as well. Um, and with that, the building community is, you know, our fans, our fans are why we do this. We love, our fans are wonderful. They're wonderful people. Um, and um, we love hanging out and playing games with them. And I want to make a note that if you're doing something fun, um, invite us. Um, Andy and I are planning to spend a lot of the next bunch of years on the road, visiting game stores, playing games with fans. Um, and teaching people how to play our games. So, great. So, well, with that quite kind overview, one of my goals today is to give everybody a quick overview of the extensive Looney Labs line. So, Kristen and Andy have been very busy over the last 26 years, and so we now have 60 games and a dozen expansions, including lots of new titles that have launched in the last year. Um, so. Let me try to break this down so it's a little bit more digestible. So we have six different groups of games, each with their own flavor. So we've got the Flux series, Lunacy, some time travel games, the Pyramid games, um, and some other family-friendly games, and even a few adult games. So, But what they all have in common, number one, is that they're fun. So we wouldn't be making games if we didn't enjoy playing them over and over again. So the first and foremost, every single one of our games is fun. Um, these are family friendly. And I know we have four adult games in there. So you're saying, are they family friendly? But all of those are still very friendly. There's nothing you know, over the top or, or crude in any of those. But so very family friendly games. We have small conscientious packaging. They're easy to learn, but enjoyable to play over and over again. 
Um, all of our games can be taught from the back of the box. We were trying to be very careful to give our retailers access so that they would know what the game would be about. Um, you know, with, if, just if they needed to try to explain it to a customer, the back of the box is very insightful in, in teaching that. But the one thing that all of them really have in common that I guess I want to stress is that all of our games were designed by Annie Looney. We have one designer. So, and as Annie likes to say, he designs the games and Kristen does everything else. So. Um, with that quick overview, Kristen, can you give us a quick introduction to the Flux line of themes and what makes those, what's similar about those? Yeah. Okay, so we have four, the, the Flux titles are broken down into four subsections. Um, family, pop culture, um, educational, and adult. Um, and so the core of the game though, the, the way the game is played, um, is the same throughout all of them. Um, and let me just do that quick explanation based here on the back of the box. Um, so the rules start off, draw one, play one. Every flux starts out that way. Um, but there are then cards that you play that change the rules of the game. And those are the yellow striped cards. Like in this example, it says draw four. Well, so the rules change, um, but the goal also changes because there's these two things called, these things called keepers, which is the green stripes and goals, which is a combination of those two keepers turned into a goal. Um, so there's one more type of card, which is the action, um, which is a one-time use thing that you just play and do whatever it says. So it's the card game of ever changing rules um, and the rules change as you, flip, as you play the cards um, from the back of the box. Um, so um, I don't know what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> All right, well, so good to that. If you don't mind, I'm going to give you some of the frequently asked questions that, you know, we get. So um, some people ask me, Kristen, if you can respond to this, if you've played one flux game, do you need to play the others? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're different. They're not, it's not just different art on the same game. That core that I just described of how the mechanism of flux works, it's actually really unusual. Um, and that's not in a lot of different games, but it's in every single one of the fluxes. But the themes add on all sorts of new flavor, not just in theme, but also in the way the game plays. And so the action cards and the new rules um, add in all sorts of different things that are very, very different from game to game. Some of them even like the, the deck can win, um, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I kind of set you up with that question because I thought you might even quote last week, there was an article in The Gamer and it was done by Matthew Candelera and it was the 15 most underrated tabletop games. And what he said in that article about the flux line, he said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read this because, you know, it was a great quote. So he said, flux games aren't simply reskins designed to make a quick buck. Each variation has dynamics that fit with the theme. And I think that that was uh, just a really thoughtful and kind you know, st st statement, but it is true because each of them have their own humor that relates with the theme. And so if people um, you know, really like one theme that might make a difference. So, but if I'm looking at these 33 games and I haven't had Flux in my store before, or, or I haven't played it with anybody else, which is the best Flux game to start with? Uh, well, that depends entirely on who you're selling it to. I mean, the base game, the, the one here that we have the box, the black box with the moon on the front, base game of Flux, absolutely always keep it on your shelf. It's a great place to start when someone comes in and say, hey, I've heard of this game Flux. Um, but if you're just talking to someone who is looking for a fun game to play and they really, really like zombies or they really, really like Cthulhu, well, don't try to sell them the base game of Flux, sell them Cthulhu Flux or Zombie Flux. Um, so it really depends on what someone's looking for. Um, and what kind of game there are. Some of them are a lot harder and easier than others. Um, but um, it, there's, a, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of options um, with, with 33 different flex titles. And with that thought, are some of the flex titles easier or harder than others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. So the original um, base game is certainly one of the easiest. Um, it's the original game of flex. Um, family flex, oh no, 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 sorry. Um, uh, Fairy tale flux, maybe fairy tale easy flux. monster flux. Yeah, mm -hmm. fairy tale flux and monster flux are also two really easy, good entry level, good for young kids um, versions. Um, and on the other spectrum, there's some really complicated ones. I mean, Cthulhu flux is the most complex, um, but something like star flux, all the keepers do different things. And so there's a lot more complexity and chaos in that one, um, definitely. Um, zombie is also a little bit more complex. Um, so yeah, there's a whole spectrum. Um, there's even a, um, a, a big Excel spreadsheet um, with a complexity diagram and complexity of all the different fluxes on our website uh, and the, in the FAQ. 
um, if you want to go deep on complexity of flex decks. Excellent. And one last question about flex. Do you have a favorite? Oh yeah, um, flex remix, of course. Um, I, the, the newest <laughs> one that we're currently pitching, the one that's new and exciting, that's always my favorite one. Um, and Flux Remix is, it's amazing. Um, it's a new base game and we'll talk more about it later, but um, Flux Remix is hands down my favorite right now. It's the one I wanna keep playing. Okay, great. Um, let me keep us moving along and because we will talk more about Flux because we have some new Flux titles, but can you give us a quick introduction to Lunacy? You bet. All right, so looking at the back of the box, um, we have, um, a draw pile, and in this case, three discard piles. The number of discard piles depends on the number of players. Each player has a handful of cards, and you can play on one of the piles if one of the images on your card matches the pile, the one on the top of the pile. Um, so it's a matching game. Um, it's the maniacal matching game um, because everybody plays at the same time. It's a speed game. But it has this cool little thing where if you can't play, you don't have to draw, you just sit there and you point at the deck. And then once all players are pointing because nobody can draw, then everybody draws a card, they hold it in front of them, don't look at it until everybody has one, and then everybody looks at the card at the same time and you go again. So you have this sort of little ritualistic pause in the middle of a speed game, which gives it a huge amount of replayability that most speed games don't have. Um, because you have that kind of chance chance to catch your breath in the middle. And then when somebody finally runs out of card and wins, you're just like, oh no, I was in you deal and you play again. Um, so it's uh, lunacy. That's a really simple little matching game, but it's a lot of fun. Non-gamers love playing this game with their non, uh, uh, sorry, gamers love playing this game with their non-gamer friends and family. Um, it's got, it, it, it's fun to play, even though it's very, very simple. Um, how was that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. So it's a great game way game, a uh, great starter game while you're waiting for longer games to start. So, cause it's pretty fast and gets everybody in, in the right mood. So, um, and so I understand that the original Lunacy was built off of the artwork from the various Flux titles from the many different keepers and that the artwork, because it's a visual game is very important to Lunacy. Can you tell me how you chose the artist Mary Inglebright and Echo Chernick for the next two versions of Lunacy that we see on the screen? Um, sure. Um, Echo Chernick is an amazing artist um, and she, um, she actually happens to be a huge Flux, Flux fan, which was great when we discovered that. Um, but she's also been a favorite artist of, of Andy's for, for decades. Um, and so he was so excited about the thought of her doing um, the gods and the goddesses because it just fits her style beautifully. Um, and it turns out she actually is a huge fan of mythology and she like learned Latin because of it. Um, and she's also a Flux fan. So it was, it was just a dream working with her and her art is so beautiful. I'm so excited about those two games coming up. Mary Engelbright, actually, we chose because of her existing body of work that was available to just grab this and that and the other. And she didn't have, I think she only made one new piece of art um, for um, uh, Fairy Tale Flux um, because she just had so much beautiful, perfect art already out there. So she was a good pick from that standpoint. Also, she's really popular um, on calendars and with moms. And, you know, so we were actually going for sort of a different market with it. Um, as far as that art. And when we got a hold of all the art we had available, there was so much of it, it was so beautiful. We decided to do a lunacy as well as fairy tale flux um, because um, we just, we had all this gorgeous art available um, for that purpose, so. That's wonderful. One of the things I noticed about lunacy is the back of the box says eight plus, but I myself have played this with children much younger. So what do you think is the actual true age of this game? Um, I'd say probably four. Um, I played it with four or five year olds all the time and it's easy. There's no words on any of the cards. Um, and when I'm playing with young kids, I often will just say, you know, because really young kids haven't learned how to hold a deck of cards in their hand yet to play games. That's kind of that first, hey, you're ready to really play games when you can really hold the cards. Little kids aren't good at that. Their hands are tiny. I don't know. But but you can lay the cards out on the table um, and then you can even help each other, like look and see, hey, does it and confirm like nobody can play anything? OK, we're all going to draw now. Um, so it works really well with the cards laid out on the table and it works really well with much younger kids. Um, we put eight up, eight and up on the box because we didn't want it to be perceived as a kid's game because it's really not. Adults love this game. It's a really, really fun game, but really young kids can't play it with them. Excellent. I agree. I was going to say I played with four-year-olds with no problem at all. Can yeah. you also, um, we're going to move off of Lunacy and can you tell us a little bit more about the time travel games? Sure. Um, well, so Looney Labs actually has a patent on time travel, I, a, a little known fact. Um, it's, the, it's the method of manipulating a card game to simulate time travel. 
Um, and it's actually expired because this game has been out for a while. Um, and patents only last 17 years. But Chrononauts is the time travel card game. And you can see from the back of the box, it has these cards laid out um, in a big grid. That's It's a board game with cards. Um, there are linchpins, which are the points in history that can be changed. Um, and when they flip over, there's an alternate history written on the other side. Um, and they then ripple to some other cards where you have these holes in time that you then have to patch with other cards from your hand. So you have a handful of cards and you play cards that affect the timeline um, and um, determine you know, this sort of romp through history um, and alternate history um, and different possibilities. And it only takes about half an hour to play. Um, and it's got great replayability. Um, there's so much that is different every time you play um, that you, it's, it's, you know, it's definitely a game that you'll want to play again and again. Um, so that's Chrononauts. Um, there's an early American version of it, um, and there's a Star Trek version of it as well. That's wonderful. Yeah, I Ask know that Andy questions. really has an interest in the time space continuum. So does Andy have a favorite time travel game? Oh, yeah, um, Chrono Track, no question. Um, I actually went <laughs> after the Star Trek license um, because he really, really wanted to make this game. And there is a whole lot of work that goes into creating a, this timeline of history. You know, this is a huge, huge undertaking and I wouldn't let him work on it. Uh, I wouldn't let him make it because I didn't have the license and I had no idea if I could get the license. Um, so I got the license and started making Star Trek Fluxes while he then spent a couple of years designing this game once we knew we could publish it. Um, and it's amazing. Um, and it is absolutely his favorite. Um, he is, a, you know, he's a Trekkie. Um, and he's really into time travel. And the, the Star Trek universe is filled with time travel stories and the different shows over the decades have visited each other. And like, there's so much great time travel going on. Um, if you ask somebody, hey, what's your favorite um, Star Trek time travel um, episode? Um, and whatever they say, it's in this game. For sure. I, I think one reviewer characterized Chrono Trek as the game designer's love letter to Star Trek. And um, I think Andy has fun quoting that description. So it doesn't yep. surprise me that you said that that was his favorite. Yeah. So, um, but even before there was time travel games and before there was Flux, there were pyramid games. So can you give us a quick overview of what these have in common? Uh, well, what these have in common is little plastic pyramids. <laughs> um, I, don't even, I don't have one here to kind of hold up, but you can see them on the picture. Um, little plastic pyramids um, that you can play hundreds and hundreds of games with. We actually have been making pyramid games a lot longer than we've been making flux games. Um, and they are, um, they're really good. They're amazing. And what's shown on the screen here is the current packaging that is available in retail stores. There's these four little box sets and there's the big um, heavy board game um, pyramid arcade version with 22 games in it. Um, as well as Zendu and the little pink bag as well. Um, so yeah, the pyramids are great. The games are really, really good. Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, there is a lot of the different things. I think of most of the pyramid games as strategy games, but that's not true within Pyramid Arcade, I know. Um, but can you tell me which one of these might be the easiest strategy game and which one might be the most involved? Well, so with the four um, along the bottom, Nomads on the far right is the easiest. Um, it's a very simple game kids can play. Um, uh, it's a very straightforward and it comes with one uh, set of three of each of the 10 different colors. Um, each of the box okay. games are really great expansions for the big board game, um, as well as good introductions to it. Um, so, but Nomads is the easiest. Ice Duo actually has two different games in it that are a little bit harder, but still pretty simple, easy kind of Andy Looney strategy games. Um, Martian Chess is a much deeper game, um, really good game, one of the very, one of the very first uh, games that came out for the pyramids. It's been around a long time and is very much, uh, very well established. And then Homeworlds is, is a hardcore strategy game. Homeworlds is on the level of Go and Chess. It's, it's, it's a really good game, like a gamer game. Um, the game that anybody that they don't play anything else from the labs, but oh, they'll play Homeworlds. Um, so it's, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do I get one of Andy's Homeworld medals? Oh, <laughs> well, so Andy loves Homeworlds. It is his favorite game of all time, not just of his games, but just, you know, all, all, of all times. It's, a, um, it's an epic space battle. Anyway, he, um, he made medals. He made actual medals with um, an engraved 
raised letters that say, I beat Andy Looney at a game of Homeworlds. And you have to beat him in order to get one of his medals. You have to find him in person and beat him. But like I said, we're planning on traveling all over the country. Every time we go to conventions, somebody will come up and say, hey, you know, can I challenge you at Homeworlds? Um, and uh, he's, he's given away a couple dozen, you know, um, no more than that. Um, so, but it's a really good game. Um, and you have to, you have to be good to beat him. You can beat him, um, but you have to really learn the game and know it um, in order to challenge him. So. Super fun. Well, and I know there's a whole Facebook page dedicated to the pyramids, you know, because there is a big, big following. So, um, but speaking of medals and awards, I understand that many of these strategy games have prestigious awards. And um, are there any notable awards that you'd like to mention? Sure, sure. real quick. Uh, we've won a bunch of Origins awards. Originally, um, the first uh, package of the plastic pieces was called the Martian Chess Set, and it had four different games in it, including Homeworlds and Martian Chess. Um, and that won um, uh, Best Abstract Board Game of the Year from Origins. Um, we also won that same award for Cosmic Coasters, uh, which actually uses pennies. Um, but Lunar Invaders is one of the 22 games in Pyramid Arcade, which is that same game. Um, that, like I said, won um, best game, uh, best abstract board game um, from Origins. Uh, we won Game of the Year for Treehouse, which is another one of the Pyramid games um, that's in Pyramid Arcade. Um, and Zendo um, won a Mensa Select Award as well as an Origins Award. Um, so, and Flux won a Mensa Award too. Um, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these Pyramid games are really good. Um, they have been around for decades. Um, there's a following for them. Um, the packaging is gorgeous. They've got little $20 versions of it, as well as a big $77 game you can sell as well. Um, so if you haven't put any of the Pyramid games in your store, if you haven't for a long time, um, definitely give, give it a shot. Um, these games are really good. Yeah, I want to second what Kristen just said, you know, and let retailers know um the pyramid games if i could leave you with one thought is these are really elegant strategy games they're very highly awarded uh, all of these games come with the looney labs 100 returnability guarantee and i know we haven't talked about that yet so i'll talk about it a little bit more but whether you're buying them you know from gts or directly through us or whatever if you're unable to sell something for whatever reason we will always return things in um saleable condition and if i were to start these pyramid games if i hadn't started them yet you know because there's a lot of them right here where would i start I'd probably start by looking at those um, front boxes, you know, the MSRP on Homeworlds, Martian Chess, Ice, Ice Duo, and Nomads. All of those are $20 MSRP. And um, I would start with Martian Chess and Homeworlds, uh, which are both highly awarded and have a real good amount of strategy in them in that great MSRP range. So um, anyway, definitely, I think that's a great starting point. Definitely uh, those are the after, ones you, yeah. sorry, definitely those are the ones you want to sell to hardcore gamers and board gamers. Um, but if you've got a lot of families and a lot of, you know, you're looking for that simple kind of, simpler kind of thing. Uh, Nobins and Ice Do, Do are also really solid games and they're more what fans of Flux might want, you know, that kind of more, they're, they're more Andy Looney games um, versus the others are more hardcore kind of, you know, board games. Yeah, a little more lighthearted, maybe, yeah. you know, so easy afternoon. Uh, so in taking a quick look at some of our games that don't fit into any particular category, can you give us a quick introduction to these? Okay, so I'm going to do this fast because we were talking long and, and we don't want to make this too long. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down into what types of games they are, which will give you a little sense of what it is. So Aquarius and Seven Dragons, same game, different art and they are both tiling games. Just Desserts is a set collection game. Nano Fictionary is a storytelling game. Are You the Traitor and Are You the Robot are both um, social deduction games. Get the MacGuffin is an elimination game and Choose One and Mad Libs are both party games. Excellent. They're all wonderful. So yeah, I'm just going to add a couple other little one bites. I mean, because all of these are unique games and we don't have enough time to go through all of them. But some of the things I find really interesting and I think my retailers and fans find really interesting is Seven Dragons, for example, the artwork was done by Larry Elmore, who he's really well known for doing the dragons on the original Dunsons and Dragons game. Um, and so you'll see that reflected in these dragons here. Just Desserts has quite a following and um, this last year has really picked up. So uh, on Board Game Geek, I'm sorry, Board Game Arena, it just launched a little, not even a year ago, and that's already been played 300,000 times since it released, you know, mid last year. 
year. So, and that one would be a great Mother's Day gift with its theme and its playability. You don't have to be a hardcore gamer, very lighthearted and easy fun. Um, Mad Libs uh, is another wonderful game. One of the things I find very interesting about Mad Libs is it's known, to, uh, the IP itself is known to 98% of households. So uh, it's an easy one to put on yourself and get some good recognition right up front. Um, Aquarius, I look at that and I think uh, it's Easter is around the corner. This is a really great one uh, to put in those Easter baskets, both because of the playability for kids three and up, but just the, the colors and, and the fun theme of it. Uh, uh, and Are You the Robot? I think it's uh, very phenomenal. We've got, it's two players, two minutes and $2. So it's an easy cart add-on. So it's a two player social deduction game, which is virtually unheard of. And uh, it's something that you could easily add to um, a cart, makes great small gifts, thank you gifts, um, stocking stuffers uh, with that little price point. So, um, but all, all of these are great games in the right so in their own right. So if I didn't say something special about these, it's just because we don't have time. I encourage you to give each of them a try. Um, can you, last but not least, our section selection of adult games. Kirsten, can you give us a quick introduction to these? Sure. Um, okay, so all of these have a suggested 18 plus um, age on them. Um, although there's, they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're very mild. Um, <laughs> I like to say the, the adult Mad Libs is silly, sexy, fun, no politics, no push down, put downs. Um, so, um, it, but it's a better version for adults than the, the Mad Libs that is for kids, um, just because it's a different, you know, a way. I, anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so Drinking Flux is definitely the best selling of these. Um, it's actually $25. Um, because it has plastic playing cards um, in it, and um, because we we wanted to, um, I don't know. I, I didn't It'd want just to be great in any, any I, location. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to publish Drinking Flux. I waited until Flux was twenty one before I published Drinking Flux. Um, but we did finally. Everybody was begging us too. Everybody wanted it, and it's a really, really good game. But it's a good. It's a really good drinking game, and I didn't want it to be like geared towards college students and binge drinking and all that kind of stuff, um, you know. So um, anyway, Drinking Flux exists. Um, and it's, it's actually a very good seller. I'm sure um, retailers are aware of that because um, it does sell quite well, even at $25. Um, Stoner Flux um, has been out for a very long time. Um, and Stoner Lunacy is also this delightful little um, tie-dyed box that has all the art from Stoner Flux. Uh, Stoner Flux is actually, this very moment is out of print, but it is coming back soon. Um, we have every time we print, we change um, the messaging on it the, um, because I, actually I can say on Friday, last week, Friday, um, the House of Representatives quietly Friday afternoon voted to legalize marijuana um, at the national level. Um, whether it'll pass the Senate or not, who knows, but this is, this is going on, still going on. It's been going on for a long time and we keep changing the warnings on the box to because it's no longer illegal everywhere um, to smoke weed. Um, so anyway, Stoner Flex was coming back again soon um, without all the warning stuff um, on it. Um, so, um, which is pretty exciting, um, at least to me, you know, that hippie thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> One little tidbit I want to add about this is just about um, Adult Mad Libs, because um, Adult Mad Libs, I understood that Andy actually enlisted the help of a college game design class to help him choose the words that were both suggestive but not offensive, and I think they did a great job. So, um, but it was one of the games where Andy enlisted a little bit of outside help and to make it fun and, um, and age appropriate. So it's not just, you know, I don't want to say our generation, but it's, it has multiple generational appeal. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely um, do a well, lot of play testing. So... Absolutely. And that gives us a quick overview to all of our games. So I th hope that that was helpful. But what I want to also do is give you a little bit of an overview about um, what makes Looney Labs special and like the advantage of ordering from, you know, Looney, uh, the Looney Labs games. So, um, but a great reason to order the Looney Labs games is um, that we have all of our schools are really family friendly. They're simple yet clever gameplay. So they're gonna appeal to a wide audience. So, and all of these games you can play over and over again. So that's really wonderful. Um, additionally, we just have fanatical fans. So we've got strong social media engagement. Um, we have a loyalty ratio that's actually equal to like Lego's loyalty ratio, as I understand, which means that our customers are coming 
coming back to repurchase more of the same brand. So adding up to more sales. And so I think that that's a really interesting point about Looney Labs. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we have so many different um, titles within the same series, if that makes sense, like Flux. You know, so someone who enjoys one Flux is going to enjoy another Flux. And so uh, that's been really great. And I, I want people to know that we really appreciate and support our favorite local game stores. And so one of the things that we do to show our appreciation is we have an online store locator. So whether you're ordering the games through GTS or um, however you're getting the games, if you let us know that you're carrying our games, we will ask you to fill out a form and we will add you to the online store locator so that people can find our games at your store. Um, additionally, uh, every game that we do has a demo copy uh, SKU that goes right along with it. So you can order the game and you can order the demo at a discount uh, right through GTS. So it's very easy to get demo copies to show your fans or to play at game nights that you host or any of those things. All of our dis all of our games also come at almost all of them. Like Mad Lab Zuno is a different size box. It's a little bit different, but most of our games come with you order six, you actually get the display that ships right on the shelf. So in this picture, you can see there's a display of Flux 5.0 and Flux Remix sitting side by side, but you can see how it holds it on the shelf and gives it just a little bit more self appeal. So, and lastly, but not leastly, our games sell. I mean, that's why you want to carry them. And not only that, but it's guaranteed. So we come behind that statement because we know that these are going to sell. So even if you pick up a title for whatever reason, maybe you tried a theme like zombies and it didn't work in your particular store. Um, if you return them to us in sellable condition, we will take those back. And GTS can help um, facilitate that or you can come to us directly with that. Um, but we have a 100% returnability guarantee. So um, is there anything? Oh, there was uh, one thing we were talking about earlier today. Uh, we have a lot of additional resources on our website. So I apologize, I did not you know, put that into this section here. But if you were looking for pictures or videos that you can put, you know, share that content uh, in your store, we have wonderful resources available to download on our website at loonylabs.com. So we encourage you to check that out. If you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to reach out about that. But all of those are reasons to order the Looney Labs um, I will wide add, variety of games. I will add one thing to that, and it's kind of an all-encompassing thing around what you just talked about, Rebecca, is you make it easy. You know, there you'd be surprised how many publishers we work with <clears throat> that have limitations of oh, we'll we'll support this much, but maybe not this much, even just in the demo side of things. Um, and to me, Flux is a staple game. Like if you're a brick and mortar retail store and you don't have Flux. I would honestly recommend to call your sales rep ASAP and get that fixed because I don't think I've ever walked into a retailer in the last 20 years that doesn't carry flux. It's always either right next to their register or in their display case by their register or right near the, the small and party game area as well. It's something that is pretty much standard in all the stores. And even for as long running as it is, there's still new to me marketing opportunities from a retailer to the consumers as they walk in. And like we were talking earlier about all the different kind of varieties or flavors or channels or whatever you want to call it. There's all these different options from a Flux perspective, depending on what's good in your store as a retailer, you might want to have a specific copy of that on demo at your store to really kind of hook people in. Because Flux is a game that kind of almost teaches itself in ways. Um, you have it out on a table. I've seen it many times before. It does not take up a very big footprint. I've seen this on a very, very small footprint, countertops, very you know, small display tables. But once people get playing it, it's one of those things that's hard to put down. And it's an almost instantaneous, okay, I just had fun playing this for the last five minutes. I'm going to pick this game up and take it home with me type thing. Um, I think that's why I see so many people have like something right next to their register as this. This is probably, if I had to like stake my badge on it, this is the game that I see next to registers more than any other game because it's just such an easy upsell when you're talking to people about any types of game. It doesn't matter if you're a hardcore gamer or you're a casual gamer or you've never played a game before, it's going to appeal to people. And if the one at your register doesn't appeal to people, there's going to be another category somewhere like science fiction, Star Trek, you know, all the different types of options that are out there and available. I was going to say one of the things that I've seen be very successful for uh, the drinking flux is cafes. Um, so there's obviously been a rise in the last year, maybe year and a half, two years of cafes popping up. Um, that's become a very big model in the board game side. And anyone that has a liquor license 
having that flux version at the bar seems to be a pretty popular thing from what I've seen going around at different stores. So there, there's a lot of different implementations for things like that, which is really cool. Um, but as Rebecca mentioned, there are demo copies available of these games. So if you do need them, you can actually do it as easy as just going on to gtsdistribution.com and ordering it. It's You'll see a demo SKU for all of the items that are in Looney Labs. If you don't want to order online, you want to order with your sales rep, by all means, you can reach out to them, to your account manager and let them know. Um, it's very, very simple and very, very easy. And I think that's one of the more important things is that not only do your game, not only are your games good and not only do they sell, but y'all make it very easy for everybody from an ordering and from a stocking perspective, which is really good. So, well, and you need to get the demos in just so that you can have fun playing the games. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We actually, I'll tell this story. Um, I won't, I won't say his name because I don't want to throw him, throw him out there or anything, but one of our sales reps uh, used to be a retailer. And uh, he said, uh, we had a conversation with Looney recently internally with our sales team. And he said that he feels that he's played like literally thousands of games of Flux over his course of being a retailer and being a sales rep and that it never gets old. So, you know, that, that's a testament to it. And again, game's been around. Like you said, you waited until it was 21 years old to make drinking Flux. That's, that's both socially years. awesome and excellent, so, <laughs> which is really cool. So... Yeah. Um, well, no, again, ladies, thank you both very much. You know, there's a lot of things to like about Looney Labs in general, apart from just, like I said, being great games. You guys are very conscientious. You're very socially minded. You're very engaged with the community. You guys do a great job online too, from a social media perspective. You know, if I could give anybody any advice, follow Kristen, follow Looney Labs on Facebook. They do a tremendous job in the community. Oh, shucks. Yeah, no, you guys do. Also so I want to tell you more, though, about Flux Remix. Sure, go ahead. Um, which is on the screen here right now. Um, so what? I even just popped over to what's new in 2022. Right. So because um, Flux Remix it has the same keepers and base game, but new goals. Yep. So so Flux Remix um, is brand new. This just came out. Um, everybody should have it on their store shelves. But it takes time to get that message out. And that's part of what I want to make sure is that if you're going to take something away from this, that's a really important message. Um, this is a new base game. Uh, it can sit side by side with the black, with the, with the moon on it, the basic flux. Um, and it's another base game in part because it has the exact same set of keepers. Um, the, the sun and the moon and milk and cookies and all of that stuff, the rocket and all of these, these keepers that like millions and millions of people have played with over the last 26 years. We've sold over 4 million copies of flux. Um, and that base game is our bestseller by far. It's the one that most stores keep in stock. And then they put a little smattering of other ones, you know, other than things they might rotate through those. But the base game you want to keep in stock. And this is a new base game. It's the same keepers, but the goals have been swapped in to be different. Um, and we've added a whole bunch more chaos. Um, if you think about it, you know, Flux was designed 26 years ago. There's 25 years of design history between these two base games. And what we've done with the new one is add in a bunch of really cool different types of cards and different stuff, things that have been developed in all those themed versions over the years that, you know, kick it up a notch, make it a little more chaotic. Um, and um, and uh, it's, also, it's also got surprises, um, which we added, which are a fun interrupt card. And um, it's, uh, it's got a bunch of musical references into it. So this is gonna be really fun to play by all those people that have played any version of the base game over the last 26 years. Because the goals have all changed, right? Um, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's it's not the kind of boring original flux. It's like, I, I can play this over and over and over again and it has all that extra oomph that some of the theme versions have, um, you know, for that, that's maybe a little more than you would probably throw at somebody at their very first game of flux. Um, but once you've got a group that's been playing it a lot, this is a super fun version to play. So you can sell this to all the existing Flux fans out there, as well as to people that have some of the themed ones, but have never bought the base game because it's just a little too simple for them. Well, now they can get the base game, right? Um, so, um, and people that have never played any version, like if you have someone coming in and asking for Flux and um they are a gamer and they play a lot of games and they can totally handle the chaos of the harder stuff you might start them on this best game in, in, instead of, of the simpler version um so as you can see this is my, my current favorite version of flex i'm really excited about it <laughs> well in flex remix is shipping now um but can you tell us i know that uh, we're just about to ship for olympus olympus lunacy and olympus flex 
So do hey. you want to tell us anything about the, Yeah. Sure. Well, these are the two, uh, these are the newest games just about to, to ship. Um, Olympus Flux, it's another themed version of Flux. Um, like all the other themed versions of Flux, it's got lots of things in it that are very specific to the theme. Um, it's got a silly card called Zeus Really Gets Around. Um, that's our only reference to Zeus's um, troubles. Um, anyway, um, it's got an Achilles heel, um, which is actually a manual de dexterity card, um, which is a rare thing in Flux, but it, it does exist. Um, it's got a card called Pandora's Box, um, which is actually a promo card that's been out for a long time. It's never been in any version um, because it's such a chaotic card, but we decided it really fit here. Um, and um, it actually has you drawing from the top of the deck, card after card after card into the discard pile until you find free rules. Um, so it fits the mythology and, um, and it's just fun to finally be putting that card into a game. Um, so that's Olympus Flux. Olympus Lunacy, Again, the artwork here is so gorgeous. We decided we needed to make a lunacy of it as well. Um, and it works really, really well. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and it's really educational. Um, I didn't say much about our educational line before, but we have a whole line of educational games, including like anatomy flux, right? And math flux, um, all, this, all this STEM stuff. But we also have um, something like this, which um, it has the Roman and the Greek names of the gods, and it has things to help teach that to you. Um, and uh, both of these are in our educational line. Um, they're really good on that sense. Um, yeah, I really think that these kind of fit the, uh, you know, whether you're inter more interested in pop culture or family or educational, um, these two releases really fit all three of those genres. They're kind of a perfect trifecta. So yeah. um, also later coming up this year are the highly requested more packs. Can you give us a quick introduction to what that means? Um, sure. So these are little foil wrapped packs like our, all of our other expansion packs. They're $5 like all of those. Um, but these just have like a collection of different basically promo cards that can go into any version of Flux. And so uh, we've been making promo cards, you know, we have for 26 years. It's the thing we do. We go to conventions, we have a new promo and we're known for um, the promo cards for Flux. And so we, we there's like 50 or 60 of them on our website. Um, and so we've taken some of the most popular, there's a few new things in there too, but it's really, it's basically that way to allow the retailers to sell the promo cards too, um, but kind of tuned into some very specific broken down, some more surprises, some more actions and some more rules. Um, some of these are some of the cool things that you'll find in Remix. Some of them are completely brand new. Some of them are just things that are in one version of the themed one somewhere and it's so cool everybody wants it you know like the most popular promos at our website because they're just everybody wants to put it in every deck um we've tried to put inside these packs so um and that's coming out and in we july. think these are going to be in july we think um that these are going to be really great value to retailers who are looking to increase the incremental sales to the same customer because you can take one of these packs and put it in any flux game. So one customer might want more than one of each of these, depending on how many flux they have, or it's an easy stocking stuffer for someone they know that already has a lot of flux games, for example. So uh, really easy and um, great economic value to the to the group. So um, well, with that, um, I guess I just want to say thank you for your kind attention. And, um, you know, is is uh, and yeah, is there something more that you want to add? Kristen? I want to add one thing. Um, I want to say, please follow me on social media. Yep. Um, me personally, Facebook, I don't use most of the other ones, but follow me on Facebook. Let's be friends. Um, I love to know the people that are selling my games, um, but also Looney Labs on all the different social medias. Um, we also have um, a retailer group um, that you can join on Facebook, a private group. Um, we also have fan groups. We have a Looney Labs chatter and a Starship Captains. That's for the Pyramid fans. Um, so if you want the inside scoop at what's going on, if you want to hear about things just as part of the community, um, please, um, please join us on social media. That's my last message. And thank you for selling my games and yes. playing. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Really, really, really appreciate it. No, and, and again, thank you both for coming and taking the time to talk to our retailers about it. Um, if you haven't been able to guess by now, there's a lot of awesome stuff here, retailers. So definitely take time, uh, check out GTS Distribution's website. There'll be a link below in the video description that'll take you directly to all of the Looney Labs products that you can see and order from GTS. Um, definitely reach out to your account managers. And like mentioned, if you want to get a demo of any of these games in your store, definitely let us know and we'll make sure to make that happen as well. Um, and as always, you know, ladies, this is not a one and 
and done type thing. Like you're more than welcome to come back and do more of these. Cause if you've been in business, as long as you have, I have a good feeling Andy's going to keep making games for a while. So as we've been, as you we've have been a lot of good stuff in the last 26 years, but we aren't done. No, that's all good. No. It's all good. We, we'd love to have you guys back. So yeah. I really appreciate it. So give our best to Andy. Definitely. Do. Retailers, thank you all for joining. Again, as a reminder, if you have questions, feel free to leave a question below on the YouTube channel. And we'll get back to you with answers as soon as possible. Thank you all very much for being partners of ours and have a wonderful time in your stores. Take care.